So, we saw that the basic process of uh, clock recovery is to detect the phase difference between uh, the incoming random data and the edges of the clock and somehow move the clock. The moving part we have not seen, but the phase detector we discussed yesterday, one of the possibilities of phase detector. Okay. And the idea here was to take the incoming data. Now, first we have to decide the data is like this and the clock is like that. Uh, I have assumed that the rising edge of the clock has to be in the middle of the data. If that is the case, you first clock the data with the clock at the rising edge okay. and you again clock it with the falling edge. So, now we have three versions of data. Okay. So, this is the incoming data, this is the same thing moved to the rising edge of the clock, I mean the transitions of data are moved to the rising edge of the clock and here they are moved to the falling edge of the clock. The spacing between these two transitions is always t by 2 and the spacing between these is some variable. Okay. So, that is theta times T s by 2 pi. So, we want to make that also to be equal to T s by 2. So, essentially what we do is we if we XOR these two, we get pulses where these two are different from each other of width theta times T s by 2 pi. And if we XOR these two, we will get uh, pulses of width T s by 2 and these pulses will appear when you have a data transition. Okay. So, you have to make uh, I mean by looking at the areas under the pulse, you will have an idea of the phase difference. Okay. So, it is the average output that gives you a measure of the phase difference and based on that you have to change, you have to make some changes to the clock. Is this okay? So, if I call this top signal, because this uh, area being more than the other one down indicates that the clock is lagging the point where it should be and you have to advance it. Similarly, if down area is more than up area, it means that it is too far advanced and you have to delay it. Okay. So, if you plot the area of up minus down. versus the phase difference phi. What is phi? Phi is 0 when the rising edge is in the middle of the data bit. Okay. So, and okay. so phi is the phase of data minus the phase of clock. Remember the polarity. Okay. So, if data is leading the clock, this gives you a positive 1. So, then you have to advance the clock. right? We are assuming that it is the clock that we will be changing. Once you understand the principle, these polarities do not matter, but initially you should keep track of these things properly. And then here, when data is lagging the clock, you have to further delay the clock, it is going to be like that. Okay. And if the up and down uh, logic uh, signals have peak values of V p or V p for logic 1 and 0 for uh, logic 0, this goes between minus V p by 2 and V p by 2 and the gain of this is V p by okay. This is actually this was quite popular these days we use uh, something else for some reasons I will show. Uh, this is known as the hog phase 
detector this is the person who first published it or lot of times it is called the linear phase detector. It is linear it is called linear because the characteristic uh, output which is the average of f minus down versus phi is linear. Okay. This is fine. Any questions about any of this? I also said that this is the average when the transition is present. Of course, the transition itself is present with a probability equal to the density factor. Okay. So, the actual average with random data will be this times the density factor. Okay. Because somehow if you have a very low density data that is the data does not have too many transitions then the average is going to be smaller that is the long term average over many bits. Each data lane yeah. No, so first you have to uh, see if in the system you expect different skews for different data lengths that is likely to be the case then you have to adjust each one individually. Okay. <coughs> one way or the other it has to be done I mean because each data lane is different right. So, you have to each data lane has to be clocked separately. Okay. So, then finally, there may have to be some other uh, retiming done. So, that all those data uh, symbols get aligned to the same clock and go to the digital backend. Okay. Any other questions? Now, how do we implement the complete system? this is D and we have this and the clock that is coming in is clearly not aligned perfectly that is why we are going through all this exercise. So, let us assume that we have a delay block which can be varied with some control voltage. Okay. So, we have variable delay that we need to have right somehow we have to be able to change the phase of the clock electronically by adjusting some voltage you have to be able to change the delay. Voltage controlled delay okay. or sometimes it is called voltage controlled delay line ECDL. Now, what should happen to the delay if uh, area of up minus down is positive? What should happen to the delay? What does it mean when the area of up minus down is positive? Clock is arriving late. So, what should I do to the delay? By the way, this is the input clock the clock that is actually clocking the flip flops is C k. Okay. So, what should I do to this delay? Reduce the delay right. Okay. And similarly, area of up minus down less than 0 you should increase the delay 
Okay. So, somehow we have to use the information in up and down, so that this happens. Okay. Now, let me assume that this delay line has a characteristic like this tau versus V c it actually decreases that is with increasing V c the delay decreases. Okay. It can be the other way around also it is not a it does not make any fundamental difference, but this is what you would expect for instance you take let us say you implement the delay with a chain of uh, inverters an even number of inverters. So, that it does not give a uh, logical inversion actually for clock it does not matter anyway. So, let us say I use the supply voltage as a control of the delay. So, what happens if the supply voltage increases to the delay of the delay chain? It will reduce right, because the current charging the capacitance will increase and the delay will reduce. Are you familiar with this? Uh, basic characteristics of the inverter and so on. So, if you if you take an inverter the CMOS inverter and then there will be a delay because of uh, the capacitor which has to be charged. And if you operate the inverter with a larger V D D, okay, then the current that is charging the capacitor will also be larger. Okay, so the delay will be smaller. Is that right? This is what happens actually. This uh, so let's assume that that's the case. And I think you will probably know if you again if you make a ring oscillator with CMOS inverters and you increase VDD, the frequency will increase because the inverter delay will decrease. So, let us assume it is like that, but anyway even if it is other way around it is not a big deal you can easily change the control loop to uh, accommodate that. So, now with this uh, so what should happen to V c if area is up minus down is greater than 0 what should you do to V c? Eh? V c should be increased yeah. So, I should go on increasing V c. Okay. remember I do not know where like what value of V c to set. So, that I get the right delay. So, if I see that the area of up minus down is greater than 0 I should go on increasing V c. If I see that the area of up minus down is less than 0 I should go on decreasing V c. Finally, it will stop where the area of up minus down is 0. Okay. Then V c will uh, remain constant and that is the correct delay. Okay. So, how would we do this? So, if area of up minus down is greater than 0 I should continuously increase V c just tell me how I might do that. There are lots of ways obviously, but give me some suggestions how should I do it? Huh? What is that? Integrated what do you say? Put which in positive? Positive feedback where? Why? Why is that? Which area is increasing? No, no, I know, but where does positive feedback come in? Uh, yeah, but why is it positive feedback? The whole thing is negative feedback, right? Otherwise, it won't work. If it's positive feedback, the error will go on increasing with time. It is negative feedback. Okay. So, what should I do? Hmm? Yeah, essentially uh, you have to come up with some arrangement. So, that when the area is more than 0 the voltage will continuously ramp up. There are many ways of doing it. The popular way which uh, by the way is used in a lot of places is to use two switches. you have a capacitor and when up is on this current will charge the capacitor, when down is on this current will discharge the capacitor. If both are on of course, no current flows into the capacitor, if both are off again no current flows into the capacitor. So, this one clearly you can see that let us say up is like this and down is like that. 
what will happen to this voltage? What happens to that voltage? Let us say up push like this. Okay. and down is of course, always half a period. So, it will be like that. Okay. So, these are just logic signals. Okay, please sketch uh, V c sorry uh, yeah this is the voltage across the capacitor V c versus time you can assume some initial value for V c and then later uh, figure out what happens. So, what is the current flowing here? It is uh, I C P times up minus down right basically that is what it is. Okay. So, last time we had uh, uh, what is that? The uh, logic level was represented by V p, but here it is just a switch. Okay. So, what will be the average current flowing? If the phase difference between data and clock is phi, what will be the average current? If I plot the average of this, really? what will that be? Why? No, no, if the phase difference between data and clock is 5 and you plot the average, we can did this earlier right, it is the same as the earlier exercise the phase detector characteristic, what is it going to be? Straight line, what is the slope? What is the slope of the line? Where? What is VC? I mean, this the ICP by two pi. Yeah, that's all, right? I mean, it's the same. See, when the logic level was one, previously we plotted the characteristic. When the logic level was one, the voltage was VP. <coughs> when the, I mean, when uh, up was one the voltage was V p and down was 1 the voltage was minus V p. Now, here it is the current, the current is plus I C p or minus I C p. So, so, the average current is I C p by 2 pi. Anyway, uh, let us uh, plot this. So, let us say I start V c from here, I can start from anywhere. So, initially for this duration, this much current will, I mean this much uh, charge will flow into the capacitor. Okay. So, it will, the voltage will increase. Okay. How much will it increase by? It is basically equal to I C P times this duration. If I call that duration some T 1, it will be I C P times T 1 divided by C that will be the increase in voltage. And after that uh, down switch is on. So, it will draw current 
and it will go down. And the way I have drawn it, the duration of down is more than the duration of up. So, it will fall, it will fall with the same slope, the rising and falling slopes are the same. What is the slope? I C P by C, yeah. So, it is the current divided by the capacitor. So, this falls for a longer time, so it will reach a lower point. After that, it will be constant because there is no current flowing and it will rise up a little bit, fall down more be constant, rise up a little, fall down more, be constant and so on. Okay. It is going down, but not continuously. Okay. This is not exactly a linear circuit, but uh, on average it is going down. Okay. Is this fine? Now, if you let us say you take uh, these points here, the points at the beginning of each period. Okay, and connect them together. That will be a straight line. Okay, because in every period it is falling by the same amount. That is the total amount of fall in a period. It doesn't fall continuously. It rises up a little and falls more. But uh, that's how it is. So what will be the slope of this? Yeah, it is basically the average current divided by C, right. If I the instantaneous current, it has some positive part and a negative part. Here I am looking at what happens over the complete period. So, it is the average current divided by C. So, this is basically equal to I C P by 2 pi C times phi. Okay. So, there is some variation around this, but on average it is falling down. Okay. This is fine. So, it is like taking the average quantity, average uh, output of the phase detector and integrating it, but you should also know that there are some wiggles around it. There are cases where these wiggles do have an effect on the operation. So, what is it that I have to do here? How do I get this V C? What should I do? The voltage across the capacitor is the correct thing to apply here, right. So, I mean there are calculations we have to do to choose the size of I C P and the capacitor and so on, but let us assume that all that has been done. So, this is in the right direction. If average of up minus down is less than 0, V c is going on decreasing and we should actually decrease this control voltage. In fact, that is why I called both of these V c also. So, I complete the feedback loop. Okay. So, what happens now? When will this uh, settle? It will settle down when this voltage on average is not changing. Okay. So, that means that up minus down up and down have equal widths. So, that it charges up to some extent and discharges to the same extent in a period. Okay. So, that way on average it is not changing, it is wiggling a little bit around the average, but on average it is not changing. So, at that point I mean if the width of up and down have to be equal that means that what does it mean? What does it mean if the up width of up and down are equal? Huh? No data transition, no. I mean if there is no data transition, there is no output from the phase detector. Yeah, This clock here is in the, the rising edge of this clock is in the middle of the data period, Okay, which is exactly what you want. So, we have clock recovery. So, this is the clock output, right? this part and we have data recovery also. In fact, you can take any of these, either this or that. That is the clock data, right? Because what did we want to do? We have uh, we wanted to align the clock in the middle of the data period and put these two into a flip flop, put the data and that clock into a flip flop. We have already done that, I mean it is already here. There is no point building another circuit. Okay. So, clock and data recovery always go together. So, this is the recovered 
data. Okay, you could take it here also. That is just a delay. Any questions about this? So, we already have our basic clock recovery, so clock and data recovery circuit. When we have the clock forwarded from the transmit side, remember we have the clock at the exact frequency, we are only delaying it. Okay? We have not generated a clock in a case where we do not have, we do not know what the transmitted clock was, we will get to that. Any questions about this? With the delay line, through the delay line or? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, all I have assumed is that all my circuits respond only to the 0 crossings of the clock. Okay. So, that is again something, I mean, if you go on reducing the clock amplitude, that may not be true. So, in general, what he is asking is the clock will not be rectangular wave and neither will be data. Okay. But that is okay. What I have assumed now is that uh, uh, when I write something like this, for instance, uh, flip flop clocked at the rising edge of the clock, what it means is I do not necessarily mean the clock is rectangular. I mean that when the clock crosses 0 in the positive direction, the data will pass get passed to the output. Okay? And that is how it will be. Of course, uh, when the slope becomes very small and so on, there are uh, uh, problems, but uh, in reality I mean none of these waveforms will be exactly rectangular at the speech that we are talking about. Okay. No, no, it is assumed that this and this are at the exact same frequency obviously, because this is the clock that was used to generate data at the transmitter. If these two are at different frequencies you have finished, I mean nothing can work, because uh, if the two are at different frequencies can you do something, I mean what happens if you apply a data input to a flip flop and a clock input to a flip flop and they are at uh, slightly different frequencies. Hmm? Yeah, so it does not matter whether the frequency is higher or lower, what will happen is that uh, uh, let us say in the first interval the clock edge happens to be in the middle of the data, the next one it will be either slightly later and the next one further later and so on. So, after a while it will go beyond the bit boundary and if it is earlier the same thing will happen. That, that may work, yeah. If it is an exact multiple, that may work, but there is no motivation to do that. Why, yeah. Okay. So, this is the case of forwarded clock, where the same clock that is used to generate data is transmitted. Only thing is, it is not aligned with the data. Okay. Any other questions? So, one small detail in the implementation. <coughs> we have this structure. Okay. How do you implement a flip flop, an edge triggered flip flop? What is inside? Sir? Latches. latches. Okay. So, what kind of latches do I need for this rising edge trigger flip flop? So, what is the first latch? So, this is the first one. What is the first latch? 
negative are you sure okay so here i won't show the edge but this is transparent when clock is zero and this is transparent when the clock is one what about the next one is obviously the opposite so we have this is transparent when the clock is high and the next one is transparent when the clock is low okay now although i wrote it like this you see that these two are transparent in the same clock face right so there is no need for two of them okay so you can just get rid of this and have this so in other words the second one doesn't have to be a flip flop it just needs to be a latch okay so you have three latches the first one is uh, transparent in the low period of the clock second one in the high period and third one in the low period okay now these kind of optimizations are important at high frequencies because the power consumption of these things can be quite significant okay because instead of using four latches you use three you have saved 25% of power in this part so we'll see actually uh, when the channel has imperfections uh, why is it uh, why is it better if it's named yeah so if it's a there are some channels in which uh, it may not be at the middle okay so if you consider a first order rc case that's a good point what happens is that uh, this voltage here uh, the, if it's a first order rc if it's data then it goes like that and it looks like the farther away from the transition you are the larger amplitude it has so you should be clocking somewhere here okay so if it is indeed first order rc okay but usually what happens is that uh, yeah so that is uh, you are talking about in between these two right but remember the data that you are getting is this okay so the bit boundaries are not here and here they are where this is crossing the zeros okay so even now with the first order rc this point is not exactly in the middle but with a higher order one what happens is the the stuff will look uh, the response will look something like that okay so don't compare it to the bit boundaries of the incoming clock okay you have to compare it to the bit because that that we don't have anyway i mean sorry don't compare it to the bit boundaries of the ideal data that we don't have anyway so it is this red stuff that we have compared to its bit boundaries meaning where it crosses zero this is in the middle okay now for a low order stuff for a first order stuff it may be slightly skewed to the right and for certain other kinds of channels it could be skewed to one side or the other but uh, by and large if you have a higher order channel like a long transmission line it will be in the middle okay is it okay you understand what is the what is the what is the supra no no it is some uh, complicated what is that i uh, you mean uh, yeah the amplitude of this could be i mean it could be that it doesn't rise up to the full amplitude it is like that okay so now if it doesn't cross zero at all that can happen also with a complicated enough channel then we need another circuits that's what i said we need equalization so that uh, that part is undone and then you have to do clock recovery on the equalized data okay right now i am assuming that the channel is not so bad that you can't even detect the one pulse right so if you have 
a long series of zeros and a single one and it goes back to zero. It is possible that with a long enough transmission line the voltage will be like this and the small pulse will only cause it to go this way. So, there is no polarity change at all in the voltage, but this of course, no circuit can recover this one. Okay. I am assuming the channel is not as bad as that, but it could be smaller than one that is okay. the latch will take care of it. It could be maybe instead of uh, full amplitude it only goes to three fourths and that can still be detected. Okay. So, when we discuss the channels and eye diagrams this will become clear. Okay. The eye has to be somewhat open, so that the clock recovery will work. Okay. But yeah, I mean there are actually some cases where you may have to deliberately skew the clock to one side or the other if you know the kind of channel. I mean the clock recovery principle is still the same you have to do the phase detection and do this, but you have to deliberately skew it to one side. Okay. If you did want a skew how would you arrange it? So, let us say this is the clock and data recovery circuit and then I wanted I want some skew between this clock the clock that is uh, uh, clocking the d flip flop and the middle of the data. So, how should I is it possible how should I arrange this. Which delay? Where? After the variable delay. Okay, if I have another, uh, okay, there is not enough room here. If I put another delay element, what will happen? Really? Why? See, it is detecting the phase between this data and this clock and finally, that is what is going to get set to 0, but there are ways to do that we can maybe we first of all easiest thing is to take another flip flop and then skew the clock uh, clock to that one. Okay. Or one possibility is you do not make the average go to 0 right, you can make the average go to some value, you have some small current here. Okay. Then the total average current through the capacitor has to be 0. So, that means that average of up minus down will have to be equal to that current that you are uh, connecting. So, that is a way to skew it okay. that is one of the ways of skewing, skewing it. Anything else any other questions about the linear phase detector do you foresee any practical problems with this at very high speeds with the phase detector. No, no, no. I am asking if this phase detector will have any problem at high frequencies. Do you foresee any issues? I have been drawing ideal waveforms all the time, right? And it is not ideal, what do you? Yeah. Yeah, so what what is the result? That is okay actually that may be so I do not know if that is even true, but uh, even if that is the case if it is monotonic I think it is fine for negative field. No, but what is the why does this whole circuit align the clock to the middle of the data? What is it that is required for that to happen? No, no, but what why why does the why does the clock in this align to the middle of the data in this whole system? Okay, duty diagonal clock is 50 percent for now let us assume that that is true. Okay. No, but why why does this align to the even with 50 percent clock what is it that is making it align? Loop delay is not an issue. Yeah, let us say that is also equal. Okay. 
up and down pulse is very small it's related to that uh, but the reason this locks to the middle of the data is up and down will have the same areas when it's in the middle of the data but is that true at high frequencies what happens to so a flip flop what delay delay from where to where yeah the output will not rise exactly at the clock edge right it will be some delay okay for well, logic gates of course there will be a delay but for a flip flop the delay is between the the output is supposed to rise at the edge of the clock but it will get delayed that of course happens for both flip flops i mean or every latch let's say and it's the same so what is the effect now will it have any effect or no What is that? No, not me. I mean, tell me what happens. Sir. Why? No, no, no. That does not. Uh, hmm? Why? Now, what happens if there is delay in a flip flop? What happens to up and what happens to down? No, no, I mean, do not say there might be, tell me what is there. Why? Okay, you have the ideal case and you have the case of flip flops with some clock to queue delay. Okay. So, what will be the difference in the up pulse? What will be the difference in the down pulse between the ideal and the non ideal cases? The ideal case, what are we are considering the Q1 and D. Yeah. So, but in the practical case, we have some delay between that. Okay. So, uh, whenever the class starts, when a particular data comes. No, no, I mean, it will always correspond to the same data. I do not know why you are uh, saying that it will be a different data, but uh, what happens to the up pulse that is? You assume that the flip flop is operating correctly, only that the output is not coming at the edge of the clock, but slightly delayed from that. Down won't change. Why? Exactly. See, all that happens is that uh, okay, so the clock. Let us say the I will draw it in the middle. Okay, this is when it is perfectly aligned. Okay. Now this is D, this is let us say D1, which is the output of the first flip flop. So, it should be like this. Okay. And D2, which is the output of the second flip flop, should be aligned here. It should be the same data. Okay. Now, what happens when the flip flops have delay? I am assuming that the flip flop is still functioning correctly, only that its output comes not at the edge of the clock, but skewed from the edge of the clock. So, the non ideal case this may do this. Okay. I am still assuming that the two flip flops are exactly the same, there may be mismatch also, but let us not worry about it. So, now Originally, <coughs> dx or d1 would be a half width pulse. Like that, and dx or d2 would be the other half. Okay. 
Now, what happens to these two signals? This is up, right? This is up and this is down. What happens to these two signals with delay? Huh? Down remains the same because uh, both are delayed, right? So, it is only delayed, that is all. Okay. What happens to up? becomes wider because the input is not changing. So, okay. so what is the result of this? Fine, okay, the up uh, is changing. So, what is the result of this? What happens because of this? Phase error. Why? Yeah, finally it will lock when the average is 0, but the average is not 0 when the clock is in the middle. In fact, it looks like the average will be 0 when the clock is slightly advanced, right. So, there will be a static phase error, okay, because of uh, at high frequencies, because of clock to queue delay, uh, this will not lock to the, the rising edge will not lock to the middle of the data interval, but slightly advanced, okay. So, think about how you may fix it, some circuit fix that you may be able to do and we will continue.